The Longines Global Champions Tour marked its 10th anniversary in style, returning to the circuit's spiritual home in Falkenswald. 28 of the world's top 30 riders made the pilgrimage to celebrate a decade of elite sporting action. Round 12 of the championship saw the unveiling of the new Topps International Arena. Hailed as a mecca for show jumping, the Dutch venue boasts over 500 stables, three VIP hospitality areas, and four world-class training and competition rings. Tour founder and president, Jan Topps, is the mastermind behind the groundbreaking facility and is proud that his concept of bringing sport, entertainment, and lifestyle to one place is now a reality. To build something like this, this is uh, special, it's like, a, like an art piece. Very horse friendly, great arenas, very well kept uh, grass arena. So also our, our VIPs and uh, people who are invited are, are well taken care of. And not to forget one of the most important, you see how beautiful the, the new tribunes are. I mean, they are, they are, are very nice for, for the public. And I think this is you know, the crown on everything when we build this and uh, you know, we're trying to continue to do so. The previous round in London had seen a thrilling conclusion to a 12-man jump-off with just eight hundredths of a second separating Britain's John Whitaker from the victorious Rolf Goran Benstorm. His run of form put him fourth in the overall rankings, but the leadership battle was heating up. A Scott Brash's sixth-place finish saw him reclaim the top spot, just 28 points clear of rival Luciana Diniz as they arrived in the Netherlands. Style Tops in Valkensvaard has long been considered a breeding ground for top-class achievement within the sport. Kamal Abdullah Bahamdan, one of its residents prior to London 2012, who went on to take Olympic team bronze, is one of the many success stories to date. Obviously, when I, you know, I, I had big goals, and to achieve the big goals, you need to have the right system and the right team around you, uh, from coaching to the right facilities and everything. And I did my research, and of course I've known of Jan for a long time. He was a very famous and successful competitor himself. So when I looked all around, I mean, he was uh, the one that stuck out, and I think, said, if I want to achieve my goals, I have to come here and start with him. The Dutch training facility is a base for many leading riders and was the foundation stone of Jan Tops' vision to create a bright and successful future for show jumping. To take what he did in a, relatively speaking, to what we're seeing here in a smaller scale to much bigger, but I couldn't imagine in a hundred years that, you know, this is how it's going to end up. Since the beginning, I think this is, the facility here has been second to none. The venue is forging the sport into a new era. Returning to his old stomping ground, Kamal is overwhelmed by what has been achieved in the past 12 months. It's fascinating. I think it's a huge leap forward for the sport. When you talk about 500 horses being stabled here over the weekend and the facilities as second to none in terms of the conditions and everything and just looking behind us here. I think that's uh, he's really pushing the limits again and the standards are really high now for people to follow. The brand new Tops International Arena would, for the first time, host four days of world-class show jumping action with over 500 horses, top riders and thousands of fans enjoying the state-of-the-art facilities. I think when you walk around, I mean, it takes time to observe everything. I mean, everything is uh, fabulous. I mean, from the grounds to the grandstands and uh, I think just walking around the whole weekend and talking to people, everyone is still trying to take it in. One thing about Jan, I mean, everything he does is dedication to perfection and to pushing the limits. Kamal feels the tour is now a springboard for the world's top riders as they look ahead to the Olympics in 2016. Our sport is, is a very old sport. I mean, it existed for over 100 years as an Olympic sport. But what we saw in the past 20 years has been a huge revolution in the sport. If the goal is to compete at the Games, I mean, you're going to be competing against the best. I mean, that's what everyone works for. And to be able to do it every, almost every other week through the Global Champions Tour, it only sharpens you up by sitting and pushing the standards consistently.
an opening ceremony marked the official launch, with guests witnessing a music and dance extravaganza, featuring 11-year-old Holland's Got Talent winner, Amira Wilkagen. As the light faded, the 10-year anniversary celebrations continued. And in anticipation of the new Global Champions League in 2016, the crowds were treated to a one-off team event. 30 of the world's best riders paired up, representing the 15 destinations on the tour. Their combined scores in round one, seeing the top eight battle it out in round two. Daniel Deusser, who went round for four the first time with Tulago for Team Hamburg, teamed up with Christina Liebherr. They're on a team score of five. As Daniel had one down and Christina just had the one time fault. Now he could be getting a bit close to the time, James. I wasn't thinking about it, but now you see yeah. he's got 10 seconds, so. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to have time falls. He's going to be very close on it. Very close on it. He is just yeah. over it. 80.18. So that makes a difference as well. Takes them up to a team score of six for Daniel Doisa and Pelago and Christina Liebherr. Kevin Stoes, Sunday top HDC. Clearing the first round. And one time fault from his teammate, Luca Birbaum. Oh, that's that was gone. late, wasn't it? It was yeah. just a touch behind. Gonna hold up of that score, otherwise Luca is going to be a little bit annoyed. He should just get there on time. Yes, he does. 77.91. There's Luca watching out in the warm-up, and it is going to be four for Kevin Stoke there with Sunday Top HDC. Harry Smolders is uh, started with a clear with two of them on our zero score just one is going to make a big difference and when you're talking about two hundred thousand euros of prize money yeah he's going to be well over isn't he yeah it's expensive very expensive he is going to be over now harry 8190 means a total of one a little bit of a different tune for uh, team shanti and she looks OK for time, which could make all the difference from that one time fraud from Harry Smolders for Team Madrid. Is to leave Team Shanti at the top of the board. It's kept coming, time's fine. Nicely done. Fantastic. 76-27, it is clear there's Henk van der Poel, teammate of Edwina for Team Shanti. Once the first riders had tackled the course, Team Hamburg were well placed on the scoreboard. Tactics and strategy then came into play, as the added pressure and responsibility of being part of a team took its toll on the second riders. On a score of six so far, would leave him in a very good position if she can get round in the zero score for a good midway finish, maybe even a little bit higher. Yeah, I thought she jumped a really cracking round. Yeah. <coughs> Again, not maybe the, the quickest sort of horse in its tempo. And so, you know, she's got to really work hard to get inside this 80 seconds. Yeah, there we go. Time's coming up. It is one time fault this time around. One in each round for Christina Liebherr. So leaves a team total of seven. Look at Bivan for sale. Leaves them with a, a chance. You're looking at wor well, you're worst third. Third, yeah. Ooh. Ah, now you see. Four faults makes all the difference. Takes them on to nine. It's going to be. Oh. oh no! And now it really changes it. So it is eight in this round. It's fine for time. Seventy-eight, one eight gets in there in the end. So I think Kevin anticipated that, didn't no, he? No, and you see, he does takes them into uh, fifth. Rolf Joran Bengtsson in the position you'd want him in, you need to ask. If he keeps coming, he should mm. just get there, but it'll only oh, be just. Oh, he's, he's moved on. Yeah. Yeah, he's upped it there and turned to the finish, and he's done it very, very well. 78-90. It is clear there from Rolf and Bengtsson. 
That's what you want from your teammates, isn't it? Definitely. Axel's very happy there. Look at that. Henk van der Poel, Spartacus, to go into battle as the last. Team Shanti. He might need to do a little bit down this final line. Yeah, you can yeah. hear the whistles. That's what yeah. you don't want. That's not going to help him. No. It's going to be squeaky close. Oh, no. And, and that's where the error comes. Oh, look at that, 79-72. Harry Small celebrates with Daniel Doyser. And you're right, you just get close on yeah. that time. And he would have just squeaked in, but turned up to that one. That pole goes down, and it, well, okay, we, get, we go into second at the end. It's not the end of the world. No, it was, it was a good round. It was. That, I think that is the hardest fence on the course to jump. The nail-biting climax to the team competition had both riders and spectators on the edge of their seats. But it was Harry Smolders and Rolf Goran Bengston of Team Madrid who came out on top. Team Chanty, having looked set for victory, denied by the penultimate fence. Daniel Deusser and Christina Liebherr, despite clear rounds from both for Team Hamburg, picking up one time fault each to leave them in the third podium position. The team competition was a thrilling finale to the opening ceremony of the Topps International Arena for fans and riders alike. It's a, it's a very good venue with a, with a, with a new adventure. And uh, today I think we show that it's going to be a success. The stage was then set for a battle of the titans in the Grand Prix at the spiritual home of the Global Champions Tour. The crowds were undeterred by the threat of rain as they flocked to Valkensvard on Grand Prix Day. The new Place de Concours was a hive of activity as fans awaited the day's action. Jessica Springsteen, an up-and-coming rider on the tour, was not in the Grand Prix lineup for this leg. But as a resident of the Stahl Top stable, she's proud to call the groundbreaking venue <laughs> her new home from home. This is so cute. There's really nowhere else like this, and it's it's really stunning facility, so I think that you know, it will be great things to come. So the horses seem to love it here, and it feels like home. Like I was just saying to Astro before, I was like, I don't feel like we're at a show. Like it's it's cool. It's a nice nice feeling. <laughs> It's nice because you know there's a lot of people here, but it doesn't feel like it because you have the big outdoor ring, the two indoors, and then we're able to ride on the sand when the show's not going on. And so it's there's so much space, and it, it feels it's really nice, it's a special place to train. So <laughs> happy to be here. <laughs> now training with two-time tour winner Edwina Tops Alexander, she hopes to emulate her mentor's success. I'm training with Edwina now, which has been amazing, and um, she's so smart, and she is such a great eye for seeing things and I remember even like the first time she saw me school each one of my horses she picked up on things that I didn't even realize and um, it's just been so amazing training with her. Good job! I saw her for the first time in Chanty where she won the Grand Prix I think it was four or five years ago and um, you know she's such a fighter like every time she goes out there she really gives it her all and something that I really want to you know incorporate in my riding and it's true you know this really is the place to be you have to go to new venues and compete against the best in the world and really challenge yourself if you want to up your riding. But her aspirations don't end there she has her heart firmly set on Rio next year. I think it's every athlete's dream to go to the Olympics one day and something I've dreamt about since I was younger and I did the Olympic trials when I was in school but you know I couldn't really focus on it because I was also flying back and forth now to be at a point in my career where it's a reality is really exciting for me so <laughs> a realistic expectation not <laughs> a reality right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it can be hard for young riders rising up through the ranks but Jessica knows to take the rough with the smooth I think the toughest thing for me was you know when you move up because you, you'll be winning in the amateurs and you know it feels starts to feel a little bit easy and then you move up and you have this lull for a few years and it's really tough and I think it's so important to just keep trying, not get discouraged. You know, when you're riding against people who have been to many championships, you have to you have to learn and you have to not get discouraged by that and just keep working hard and yeah, do your best. <laughs> Eighteen out of the world's top 20 riders were amongst those taking part in the 12th Grand Prix of the series. A triumphant clear from Bassam Hassan Mohamed got round one underway. But a host of riders were caught out by the course. We're in trouble. Oh, hesitance. Very hesitance. Oh, no. But then the heavenly...
Sevens opened, and Luciana Denise also fell short, picking up a surprising four faults on her grey stallion, winning move. A total of 12 riders went clear and would battle the elements once more. Despite the rain, the ground held up perfectly. We've seen some superb riding performances, mm. aren't we? In these conditions this afternoon. I mean, two superb rides on the bounce there from Marco Kucha and Gregory Wathelay. Round two saw yet more drama, with jumps up to 1m60 strategically positioned in the vast arena. The home crowds were delighted as the first double clear came from local favourite Henk van der Poel. Yeah, the yeah. crowd really <laughs> willed him home. He gave that a great ride. The horse jumps too, doesn't he? A nice horse. His compatriot, Harry Smolders, was not quite so fortunate. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. oh dear. Hold on, Harry. But leading rider Scott Brash made it safely through. Six strong contenders lined up for the jump off in search of their share of the €300,000 prize purse. Scott Brash fourth to go and Germany's Marco Kutscher bringing up the rear. Heavy rain continued to fall as the course was reset and guests relaxed in the comfort of the VIP areas sampling Michelin standard food. But silence fell amongst the expectant onlookers as home favourite Henk van der Poel entered the arena. Can he win it from the front? This has been uh, a good solid Grand Prix combination in the last few weeks in uh, a host of them. And a three and four star level. Tough call. Yeah. Right. First of six. Fence three. He's got to do it from the gallop. Lost a stirrup there. Took a flyer there. Now to this double. Very wet and sloppy down this side of the course now. Long, long, long way. All the way up here to the planks. Tempting to gallop. Yeah. Now back to another fence, which is not, the, not a new fence, it's the old first fence backwards. And now gallop to the last part of the treble combination. I don't think anybody needs to come inside that bank. A good start there for Hank van der Poel. 36.80, but uh, it'll be enough. You have to say, full credit to him. Yeah. Uh, not the easiest prep by any baby shape or form. No. Set a decent standard, but I think there's, there's horses that are faster across the ground than that, notably. Hello, Sanctus, for one. Yeah. And he wouldn't be alone. Well, Basim Hassan Mohammed is the next one to take up the mantle. California. Can they be our ray of sunshine here this evening? One in Monaco. has already posted one LGCT Grand Prix in his portfolio. 36 8 0. Some no hanging about. Nice line that fence on, across there and leads you to this double here. But then a long way. Very long way. 12, 13, 14, 15 strides landing in 20, 21 and a half, 22. And there's the time to beat. Not many troubles and fences in here, but Difficult fence to gallop to this last. This is very close. Whoa. Oh, and it's just about got away with it. Into the lead. This is a funny at the last one. Isn't it? That was a hard stopper. 35-82. Over the last points of the horse, California. Hassan Hassan Mohammed takes the lead. Will it be enough? We've got to wait and see. It's got a lot more to come, but no wonder he gave the credit to the horse. Look at the gallop here. What a hard stopper. More or less classic while I go, and uh, four left to come. Actually, weather's eased a little bit. Right, where's he going to find it? Over the first three. He agrees with me, look. Losing every bit of this fabulous arena. Take a stride out up there, at least one. Landing in is faster, of course. 20, 20, 21. Time to beat 35, 8, 2. 
He's That's come it. inside the bank. I thought somebody would. And leaves it up. That's fast to 34.97. And if you notice, he just on the timing hits as well. He skewed off to the one yes, side there where they were closer. Yes, exactly. And there is Hello Santos and Scott Brash. This is running away with him in the last round. If he leaves them up, he'll surely beat him. Seriously. Oh, look at that. Shave that corner off. Wants to land. Oh, this makes fence. 20 seconds, really. Look at the gallop here. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, oh. No. Oh, could it? I couldn't see him jumping that from that gallop. Up to the last. He's going to go wise. Another time, 34.97. Well, you know, really, and he's not, not as fast. He knew he'd got to do something remarkable. He had to chance it somewhere. But he just picked on the wrong fence, didn't he? But the time tells you everything. He didn't slack off after that. You see, he'd gone six to the plank the previous time and got away with it. He was the only one that did it in the whole of that round, yeah. in that second round. Two lefts to go. Gregory Wadeles, algorithm. He thinks he can do it over the first two or three. Look at the speed here. No, oh, no. So it's 50 50 on Simon now. Mm. I think we've seen the winner. But I, d I just don't think that um, Marco's. I don't know. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. I think just that Juan Margo is a naturally faster horse. But look at the time there, 33.89. Came inside to the wall. Marco will be watching that, 34.97. I know he had a fence down there, obviously. If he can, if he can take that same line, but he's going to have to really, really travel because Simon de Les Sources is a fast, yeah. naturally a faster horse. He's got his back against the wall, and the Frenchman has really laid it down to him. Last to go, Marco Kutcher, Van Gogh. Top three at the moment, Simon de Les Hassan Mohamed and Henk van der Poel with their uh, triple clears. He's got the skill, the guile. Last turns is renowned for. Yeah. Silence drops again. Now he's got to go. He really has got to go. 34.97. Landing here. This is quick, isn't it? Yep. <coughs> Getting back to this big ox. It's a big fence, that is. And now he's got up to that 34.97. This is very close indeed. He's come inside. It's so close. 34, 86, he does it. He's got it. There oh. we go, Simon de Lest. Oh. <laughs> Marco Kutcher then uh, goes through to the top. Brilliantly done. Van Gogh finishes uh, as the winner. Congratulations to them. Absolutely brilliant ride, wasn't it? That was a round and a half there for Marco Fuchsia. Disappointment on Simon de Rest's face there with Tanguy Wood. In defiance of the rain, it was a tightly fought contest to the bitter end, with Simon de Lest missing out by the narrowest of margins to an ecstatic Marco Kutcher. To be honest, I still can't believe it. Uh, as Van Gogh, he, I think it's the second time that he, he jumped the five star Grand Prix so far, he jumped in a second classes and uh, I think I've never won a class with him so far and then to win a, uh, the Global Tour here it's uh, something special and uh, yeah I'm really pleased with him he jumped super and he, he tried everything and uh, yeah I'm happy. Rolf Goran Bengston rose to third place in the overall rankings and despite a recent disappointing run of form Luciana held on to her spot in second. Scott Brash's sixth place meant he's just 22 points clear at the top, but remains optimistic. Uh, I miss Rome because uh, I go to Calgary, so I miss Rome. So I've just got Vienna and Doha left, but um, yeah, we're in a good position. It would have been nice to get a few extra points today. Um,
um, but OK, it's, uh, we're still in a good enough position at, at this moment in time. For the first time, the tour now moves to Rome, where the Eternal City's Stadio dei Marmi will play host to show jumping's finest as the championship reaches its climax with just three rounds to go.